The following program is rated T for Teen for the use of tools and materials that can be harmful to unsupervised usage. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, Mr. Wah here from Mr. Wah Media, and yes, that is my actual name. And today, we're going to work on some Viking houses. Welcome back to the show everyone, and as I said, today we're going to do some Viking buildings. This one is super easy to do, super affordable, and it takes barely any time at all. And we're going to have to work with a brand new material, or at least new to me, some faux fur strips. And I think it's going to change how you do terrain going forward, I really do. I think you guys are going to like this one, so let's jump right in. Now the very first thing that we're going to need for this build is of course the base. For this one it's going to clock in at roughly 7 inches by 6 inches, but as with most of my builds, you can use whatever measurements you want depending on how large the project is going to be. Once I'm satisfied with this, I'm going to take my trusty pair of scissors here and just roughly cut out the corners. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but something generically looking like this. Once I'm satisfied, I'm going to take my blade here and I'm going to slice it at an angle just to round it out a little bit. Make sure the blade is nice and sharp, that way it doesn't catch on anything. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep going around the corners here. Go nice and slow, don't want any mishaps here. And eventually, you're going to get a base that looks like this. Next step, we're going to work on the front and the back pieces of the structure. For this one, we'll use more of our little foam here, but you can use cardboard if you need to. Doesn't really matter at this point. These pieces are going to be about eh, three and a half by three. Uh, as always, though, use whatever measurements you want. I mean, who am I to tell you what to do, right? I'm not your parent, right? Oh, God, I'm not your parent, am I? Oh, God, I hope not. I mean, look at you. Jeez. You haven't even liked, shared, and subscribed yet. I mean, I raised you better than this. Jeez. All right, what we're doing at the top here is I'm marking at the halfway point, and I'm running a line from the corner to the very middle so that we get a triangle like this. I'll, of course, do the same for the back piece. We'll go from there. Once I'm satisfied, we're going to go in here with some coffee stir sticks, and I'm going to carefully mark them like this, and we're just going to keep going up. You can, of course, do these uh, like I'm doing here. They're all intact. They're one long uh, piece of lumber, basically. You can split it up if you want to. You can make it more jagged. I'm keeping mine relatively clean just so you have a pretty good uh, template to go off of. But as always, do what you want. I mean, if you are my kids, I mean, you don't even listen to me anyways. So, you know, have at it. Do whatever you want, I guess. Just you know, be home at a decent time. Brush your teeth. Um... Stay in school, I guess. Ah, but enough about you snowflakes. Let's go back to talking about someone important. Me! Look at me go here. Alright, I'm taking my blade here, nice and sharp, and chopping off any of the wooden pieces that are going slightly over the edge. With that, our front panel is done. Obviously, I'll make a duplicate for the back, and we'll go from there. Next, we're going to work on the roof. For this one, it's going to be about 3.5 by 3.5. And uh, we're just going to chop it here. Obviously, I need two pieces, one for the left, one from the right. It'll sort of triangulate like that. We'll take our front piece here, and we're going to glue it to our base. I've marked it out already. You can sort of see there where it's going to sit nicely for me. Um, just, that's going to be the length of the roof, right? You can obviously make this a lot longer. Uh, later on, you're going to actually see me do one that's about seven inches in length uh, for like a long house. And uh, it looks pretty cool. But for this basic structure, that's it. Pretty elementary, right? Now we're going to play with a brand new product that I just picked up at the dollar store. And this one is some faux fur. Comes in a roll a couple meters in length, and it's about three inches in width. So what I'm going to do here is start harvesting these little strips. Uh, these ones are about two inches in height. I'm going to pull the fur up a little bit, that way I can chop it. That doesn't make much of a mess. Uh, but beware, this stuff does shed a little bit once you start cutting it, so just, you've been warned. I'm going to harvest about 10 of those strips, and a few of them I'm actually going to chop in half. So this one is 3 inches, and then I have another inch and a half here. So I apologize earlier, it actually the measurement for the roof is about 4.5 by 4.5. I stand corrected there. Um, and all you got to do is just lay these down like shingles, basically, right? You have the overlapping, uh, and the fur is going to cover any imperfections. So don't worry about it too much. You can just sort of brush it out. Um, I put a little bit of glue in afterwards. I don't think I have the footage of it, but it just keeps it a little bit hard. I put a little bit of varnish in there to really solidify it. But overall, this stuff is pretty forgiving to work with, and uh, it's going to look fantastic once you see the end product. 
So I got my final pieces here. Uh, watch out, the hot glue gun, it tends to glob on this stuff. Like I said, the hairs will get in there, makes a bit of a mess. As long as you don't get it on the front of the fur, it's not too bad. But uh, yeah, just, just take your time with this one because it can be a little bit annoying. And my desk looks like a cat shed all over it. Got a little bit of a gap there, but no big deal. Like I said, you can just patch it up with these. It's pretty forgiving. And we'll just take it from there. I'm going to get my scissors here and chop off anything that's sort of going over the the, uh, the border there. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Uh, obviously, it's not going to be symmetrical and all that. There can be a couple strands here and there. But for the most part, I didn't want it going over too much. Otherwise, it's just going to be annoying. And uh, there we go. We've got two of our panels done. So now it's time to just bolt them down. I'm going to get my hot glue gun here. Put a pretty generous glob down each side here. And bolt that firmly in place, especially when you're doing, like I said, I did a 7-inch one. Uh, I need a little bit more glue there just to help anchor it. But uh, overall, this stuff is pretty light. You know, It's not like it's going to start warping and bending, so it's pretty forgiving. And it looks really cool. I mean, look at this thing. I'm pretty happy so far. Now what I'm going to do is take a couple leftover pieces of the coffee stir sticks. Just mark it here in the middle. And what I'm going to do is sort of like a timber frame on the outside. I've seen one person do this with these Viking uh, structures, and they do a bunch of ruins, and they'll actually hand carve them in. I'm not going quite that crazy on this one, but later on I might put a couple shields here and there just to give it a little bit of a, a little bit flair. But uh, overall, as always, all the detail work is up to you what you want to put into it. I think this looks pretty cool as is. Obviously, I'll do the back as well. And uh, yeah. This is looking fantastic. All right, for the top here, I'm going to take a couple of these extra patches and just stick one in the middle, one on the other side there, facing outward like so. There you go. There's a little bit of gap in the middle, so I'm going to cover it with some of the fur. I'll glue a little bit in there if I have to. That doesn't look too, too bad. It goes a little over uh, from what I would like, so I'm just going to chop it up here like a <laughs> like I'm in a salon here. Just chop it. There we go, yeah. Work it, work it, fantastic, excellent. All right, with that out of the way, we're gonna work on the front door. I've used this one several times in my different builds. It's pretty basic. You just take a one and a half roughly in, uh, yeah, about one and a half by two inches in height, one inch in width, and you just get a bunch of coffee stir sticks to run up and down it, like this. It takes about five, so this one's probably Let's just have a ruler here. Yeah, so one and a half by one inches. There you go, if you're looking for the precise measurements here. And I take another one, split that in half, and that's going to be basically the frame for the top and the bottom. Once I'm satisfied with all my pieces, I'll put a glob down the middle here and stick the first one and then just sort of build off of each side, right? So like I said, it takes about five for this width. Obviously, you can make a larger door if you want, if you're doing different scales and all that. Uh, but for a basic 28 millimeter figurine, this works pretty good. All right, so the main ones are down. Now I'm going to put one line at the bottom. Put the brace down. Put one at the top as well here. Like so. Pretty cool. Now I'm just going to try to get a good shot of this one it's a little bit difficult with the lighting here but you you get the gist of what i was going for right um pretty basic right only took like a minute or two to make now what i'm gonna do is just take my blade here chop off anything going over too much uh just be careful there i didn't have quite enough glue so i'll just reapply that no big deal right and uh yeah now i'm gonna see oh, what am i doing here what am i doing Cleaning up all the cat hairs from this stuff. The faux fur. All right, I'm going to take my scissors here, chop off a little bit so it's just flush with the bottom. And once I'm satisfied with the placement here, I'm going to reload my hot glue gun, put a little bit around the frame here, and then we'll bolt it down. And that is the final piece of the structure. I might do some decorative stuff later on, like I said, maybe a shield here and there, but for the generic structure, we're solid. Now I'm going to take some clear Elmer's glue here and spread it all around the base, making sure not to get it on any of the wooden surfaces, and especially don't get it in the fur. If you do, it's not the end of the world, but, you know, just try to be safe with it. 
Now, obviously, you can use white glue for this as well. I just prefer the Elmer's Clear. Uh, I find I can use it for some special effects, and it has a little bit more uh, adhesiveness to I find. Um, but again, dealer's choice, right? Whatever you have on hand, white glue works just as well for the most part. So I'm going to just keep going here, uh, cover this entire thing. Uh, this is a mixture of sand and dirt, so it's a pretty fine one. I'll give it a little bit of time to dry, do the whole base, and then I'm going to come back in, and I'm going to use a little bit more gritty stuff. This has got little pebbles in it, um, a little bit more larger pieces of sand, that kind of stuff. I'm not going to cover the entire thing, right? I want some layers to this. I want to give it a little bit of texture um, because we're going to have the original sand and dirt. We'll have these larger gravel pieces. And then later on, we'll, of course, have a little bit of flock on there to give it a lot more depth. So I'll knock off all the leftovers, but this is what the final base is going to look like. And we'll go from there. Now, the very first thing I did for the painting is cover the entire thing with black primer. Give it plenty of time to dry before going in now with some generic brown. I'm going to dry brush this over all the surfaces. Uh, make sure you gave plenty of time for the, uh, the glue to dry with the basing, right? Nothing worse than having the sand and rocks all go flying off everywhere. And uh, pretty generous with the base. On the wooden pieces, it's a pretty generous dry brushing as well. Um, pardon me. When you're doing the wooden elements, make sure you don't go with the grain, go uh, side to side, and that gives it a little bit more textures. Uh, you can check out some other videos where I've gone into a lot more depth, sort of the sciences behind that. But, yeah, just do you. Cover everything, and uh, including the fur. You'll notice I actually have some black in there as well. This just gives it a nice aged look, and so I'm going to use a little bit of brown in there as well. Uh, really just grimes the whole thing up. Makes this look like it's been out in the elements. And uh, I'm really satisfied with this. I'm glad I found this product because I think I'm going to be using it in a few projects going forward. So once I'm done that, one basic layer of brown over everything. Give that plenty of time to dry. We'll move on to the next step. From here, I'm using two parts brown and one part white for a much lighter color. And this is going to get dry brushed over most of the surfaces very lightly. As you can see here, it's making these elements already really pop out. Now, I tend to use a little bit more yellow in the mix as well to give it a warmer look when I'm doing wood or grounds. But because I'm doing Vikings in a much harsher climate, I decide to go with this more cold look. And I think I'm really pulling off that effect. And that's what the second layer is going to look like. Now we're going on to the third and final layer. That's right, folks. This is a super simple build. I'm going in with just basically pure white, and there's hardly anything in my bristles. I'm lightly dusting this over all the surfaces, all the ground, the wood, and, of course, the roof. This gives it that cold look that I was describing, right? It gives it frosted, a harsh environment, and uh, it just really sells the whole atmospheric look I'm going for, right? It's... Uh, Really simple, we're done basically. Like I said, three colors. You got your brown, your light brown, and your pure white. You're done. Now we're gonna finish off the base here. I'm going in with a little bit of flock. And this one in particular is called Swamplands. It's a little bit warmer of a color, but that's going to give this whole thing a little bit of contrast, right? At this point, the only color that we have is the natural color that the faux fur provided. Everything else is that harsh winter kind of look. So this is going to give a little bit of contrast to the overall look. I'm not using a whole heck of a lot of it here. Just little patches here and there. And again, as I mentioned earlier, we have the different layers of the, the sand, the dirt, the gravel. Now we've got the flock. It just ties it all together. Obviously, if your table looks different, try to match it as best you can. But for me, I'm really happy with this one. And ladies and gentlemen, we're done. The build. And there you have it. The Viking structure. This was super simple, it's easy to build, uh, and it was really fun to work with the new material. I hadn't done the faux fur before, and I gotta say, I'm really satisfied with how this turned out. And the cool thing is, you can take this template, and you can make it a lot longer. Like here, you have your longhouse for your warriors. You can, of course, scale this down if you want to do 15 millimeter, 20 millimeter, etc. Might be a little harder to do, say, 10s or anything uh, smaller than that, but hey, give it a shot, why not? And as you can see here, I've got an entire village going on now. I cranked out several buildings in the afternoon, and this was a really fun little project. I hope this inspired you guys. I hope you guys like it. And on that note, we're signing off. 
Well, that has been today's episode. I really hope you guys liked it and maybe found some useful information in there. If you did, make sure that you hit the like, the share, and subscribe button down below. And please, pass this around to all your friends. We're really trying to build the channel from the ground up. If there's anything that you want me to build in an upcoming episode, let me know in the comments down below, and maybe we'll be able to build it for you in the future. On that note, I've been Mr. Waugh from Mr. Waugh Media, signing off.